Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to see the tragic state that we end up in when we are out of fellowship with you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Genesis uh, chapter three, verse six through seven. The English Standard Version reads, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves uh, together and made themselves loincloths. Today I want to spend a few minutes talking about the tragic, the, the tragedy of lost fellowship with God. The tragedy of lost fellowship with God. Believing lies can lead to tragic consequences. Humans are so constructed that we must believe something. And if we don't believe the truth, then we eventually end up believing lies. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse 10 through 12, and I'm reading the NIV version. It says, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And so that they, so, so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. But if we believe lies, we will have to suffer the consequences that always comes when people reject God's truth. Now verse six directs us to disobedience. First of all, Eve took the fruit and ate it. And remember the, 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 the rule was from God was of all the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die, be separated from God. And remember our series that we're working with is God wants to be with us. And now we're laying a great little groundwork of how uh, mankind got separated from God in the beginning. Again, first Eve took the fruit and ate it, ate it. And then she took some of the fruit to her husband and gave it to him and he ate it. So that both of them disobeyed God. Eve was deceived, but Adam sinned willfully with his eyes wide open. First Timothy chapter two, verse 14, the English Standard Version says, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. This is why Paul points to Adam, not Eve, as the one who brought sin and death into the human race. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 15, and this is the message version. You know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we're in. First, sin, then death. And no one is exempt from either sin or death. That sin disturbed relations with God in everything and everyone. But the extent of the disturbance was not clear until God spelled it out uh, in details to Moses. So death 
this huge gulf separating us from God dominated the landscape from uh, Adam to Moses. Verse 14 says, even those who didn't sin precisely as Adam did by disobeying a specific command of God still had to experience this termination of life, this separation from God. But Adam, who got us all in, into this and also pointed ahead to the one who will get us out of it. Yet, the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death dealing sin. If anyone, any, any man's sin puts uh, cr crowds of people at the dead end abyss of separation from God, just think what God's gift poured through one man, Jesus Christ, will do. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 says, everybody dies in Adam. Everybody comes alive in Jesus Christ. That's the message version. God sees the first Adam as the head of the human race, the old creation. When Adam sinned, we sinned in him and through him and suffered the consequences of sin and death. But God sees Jesus Christ as the head of the church, the new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, hallelujah, he is a new cre creation. The old has passed away, and behold, look, the new has come. And it is through his righteous act of obedience in dying on the cross, we now have life and righteousness. When you got life and righteousness, you've got fellowship with God. Yes, sin and death are reigning in this world, but grace and right righteousness are also reigning through Christ Jesus. Faith in Jesus Christ moves us out of Adam and into Christ, and we are accepted in his righteousness. Eve sinned because she was attracted to the fruit of the forbidden tree. She was walking by sight and not by faith in God's word. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 parallels 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. For good for food, the lust of the flesh, pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes, desirable for gaining wisdom, the pride of life. These are the things that motivates the people of the world even today. And when God's people start thinking like the world, they start living like the world. Can I say that again? When God's people start thinking like the world, they are soon start living like the world. That technique worked on Adam in the garden. Satan pulled it on him and Sorry to say that we all have sinned and come short of God's glory, so that means he has pulled it all on all of us. But uh, even though it worked on Adam in the garden, it did not work on Jesus Christ in the wilderness. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, word that ye may grow thereby. We know why Eve succumbed to temptation, to the, uh, but why did Adam willingly sin when he knew what was contrary to God's will? He knew it was contrary to God's will. So why did he sin? Did he see a change in Eve and realize that his wife wasn't 
the same in the same sphere of life as she had been? Did he did he have a have to make a choice between obeying God or staying with his wife that he undoubtedly loved? These are questions that the Bible neither raises nor answers, and it's unwise for us to speculate. Adam made a choice, the wrong choice, and humanity has suffered ever since. It's amazing how many people will follow your lead even if you are wrong. Verse 7 talks about knowledge. Satan promised that they would be like God and know good and evil. And his promise was tragically fulfilled. Shame also is found in verse 7 they realized their nakedness for the first time. They quickly made coverings for their bodies. Sin, sin ought to make us ashamed of ourselves, of our wrong actions, our lying, deceiving actions. The things that we know are wrong and we do it anyway, that should make us ashamed of ourselves. God has given us an inner judge called conscious that accuses us when we do wrong and approves us when we do right. You can find that, uh, more about that in Romans chapter 2, verse 12 through 16. The Bible calls that a seared conscience or an evil conscious that no longer functions properly. Whenever we are out of fellowship with God, so much of who we are, what we are, ceases to function properly the way God designed it to. We fail to be the people that God designed us to be. When people are no longer ashamed of their sins, their character is just about gone. They will do just about anything. Sin that used to be committed under the cloak of darkness will then be committed openly, like in movies, on television, and we take it as just entertainment. And when people protest, they are called prudes or old fogies or old fashioned. We've come to the point where we categorize sin as big or small or little sin. But sin is sin with God. Even in our everyday lives, sin is up front and in our faces. But we act as though it's not even there. Verse 8 talks about fear. Sin produces both shame, guilt, and makes sinners want to hide. Adam and Eve felt ashamed because of what they were. What they, were. they were naked now, and they knew it. They had been naked and didn't know it, and it wasn't a problem. But now they knew they were naked, and they were ashamed. And they felt guilty because of what they had done. They had disobeyed God. Guilt and fear usually go together, which explains why Adam and Eve didn't want to enjoy their evening fellowship with the Lord in the garden anymore. Adam admitted, I was afraid. Trying to hide from the Lord is certainly a useless attempt. And yet guilty sinners still attempt the impossible. Shame, fear, and guilt 
transforms the inner person that Adam and Eve could no longer enjoy their beautiful garden home. Sin will cause you to not enjoy your, your, your not have an appetite and can't enjoy food that you used to. Sin will cause you to look in the mirror and not recognize the person that you're looking at. I digress. The trees that Adam and Eve had tended and admired and from which they had eaten were now only things to be used to hide two frightened sinners from the face of God. This wasn't what the tree wanted to do. It wasn't what God wanted it to do. But they had no choice. Nature is a window through which we see God, but Adam and Eve made it into a locked door to keep God out. One day the Savior would die on a tree so that frightened sinners could come to the Lord and find forgiveness. One Friday, on an old rugged cross, on a tree, Jesus died for lost sinners. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early the third day morning, can I say that again? Early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands in those hands that had that the nail had riveted to the tree to the cross became the hands that would deliver us from our sins let's close with prayer our heavenly father thank you for the principles and the precepts that you brought to life in your word that helps us to appreciate the wonderful fellowship we are given with you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you once again for joining us and we pray that God's word will come alive in you and that it will help you to uh, seek a closer walk with him to have a fellowship that sin separated us from. It's a wonderful thing to enjoy fellowship with God, to be one with him. Uh, let's be careful, but enjoy what the Lord has done for us while still being patient. That's it for today. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Love you.